afternoon. Thank you for joining us with We've Got Issues. I'm Nancy Furness and I'm here with my colleague Brad Nickerson. Uh, We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan citizens based um, forum where we look at issues of concern to the Tri Cities and beyond. And we're here today with Tri Cities Community TV filming in Coquitlam and we're on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of Coquitlam First Nations. So we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for the waters and all that is above and below. So today joining us is um, Laura DuPont and Laura is the president of an association called the LMLGA. So it's the Lower Mainland Local Government Association and I think I got that right. So welcome and thank you for joining us today, Laura. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you folks. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do at the LMLGA, what the goal and the purposes of the LMLGA is? Sure, um, so yeah, lots of acronyms that confuse people. Um, and um, so there is the Union of BC Municipalities, which is the whole province, all the local governments in the entire province, and it's split up into five geographical areas. And there's an area association for each one of those areas in the province. Um, ours is the Lower Mainland Local Government Association. Um, and we represent 30 local governments from Pemberton to Hope and three regional districts, which are Squamish, Lillooet, Metro Vancouver, and the Fraser Valley. So that's a pretty significant chunk of people um, that we represent, lots of communities, but that's where the, obviously the urban population is. So we represent a lot of, um, you know, people within our community. It, would I be right if I guessed that that was the majority of people in BC? Like, yes. like a majority in that, say, in that area? I would say absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, so the five area associations of which we are one. So can you tell us a little bit about how the LMLGA fits into um, the overall governance of British Columbia? Sure. Okay, so there's obviously local governments. And then um, as you kind of think a bit more regionally, there's Metro Vancouver, which obviously handles our, our, you know, our water and wastewater situations. We are a bit kind of aligned with the uh, regional type of government approach because we're the unified voice of the region. And then there's the province. So it's sort of like um, in the middle level of government between local and provincial. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. Um, there's also the UBCM, which being president of the LMLGA gives you a seat on UBCM, I believe. And I was wondering, can you tell us a little bit about um, what the UBCM is and, and what kind of work um, is carried out at that level as well? Sure. So the Union of BC Municipalities, all the, all the local governments and regional districts in the province, um, they shape policy, which they usually flow through, flow that policy through the area associations. And then uh, in the fall, when the UBCM has their conference, it's a big conference, often held in Vancouver or Victoria, and that uh, policy is, um, you know, for the most often times supported, it goes through UBCM, supported there, and then goes on to the province. And then the province looks at that policy that has come from UBCM, supported by all those local governments and they work to fit it into their budget and those build those priorities in the work that the province does. Okay. So why would a municipality want to belong to LMLGA? Um, and I guess in other words, what would a community or a municipality have to lose by not belonging to LMLGA? So it's, it's just a, what it's about is a unified voice, right? We, as a region, are much stronger together, obviously. Higher numbers, more people to represent. And if we advocate for a larger number of people, we are a stronger group. And I guess where you would lose that benefit, if, if you were not within that group, your voice would be silenced. And you would not have the ability to um, um, receive some of the benefits that that larger unified voice would would benefit from. Can communities not be part of that group if they want? Communities can not be part of the, those groups um, and traditionally that's not something that happen, generally happens. Most um, communities want to be part of the larger group mm -hmm. um, and um, feel that there is good value in that, in that advocacy for, for a larger group. 
So I have, a, I have a follow up question to that. So how is it that you became the president of this organization? So uh, obviously, all those people that I just talked about within the area association, um, they uh, can choose to come to the lower mainland local government association, AGM and resolution session, which we have every year in May. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, just a small three day conference. And, uh, you know, we usually get a couple hundred people to that conference. And that membership votes on the executive that they want to see governing the Lower Mainland Local Government Association. So you're elected by a group of peers, mm -hmm. you know, w within the region. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, I'm assuming, because I think something that we haven't mentioned is you're on the Council of Port Coquitlam. And so those people, so that's part of the route to um, those associations and, and all of those people. And they know you by reputation um from previous years true and you could you have to be on local government you have to be a mayor or a councillor to be able to serve as lmlga right, right. Like that is a, a, a prerequisite so you're like a link in the chain yeah. of sort of going up to from municipal to lmlga to ubcm and then you have a voice with at the provincial level correct um so can you tell us a little bit about some of the issues or initiatives that might be covered at the LMLGA level? Like, what do you do? What sort of things do you deal with? So there's a lot of shaping um, policy is, is what happens. We, you know, we work with communities who bring forward policy um, through our process. Policy is shaped and brought forward to our, our different five individual conferences. And then if supported, it goes forward to UBCM. And typical policy might be, well, it could be anything that is really the jurisdiction of local government. Um, it could be, um, you know, it could be issues around climate security, um, uh, food security. It could be issues of reconciliation. It could be housing issues. It, it's, it's anything that is the jurisdiction of local government. Okay, that's great. Can you give us some specific examples, like maybe some things that you feel um, very proud of accomplishing or some things that have been challenging and that municipalities have worked together to achieve? Just maybe some examples of yeah. some of the highlights? So, you know, obviously in Port Coquitlam, um, you know, we we're really fortunate to have a lot of salmon berry creeks still in our community. Um, a lot of other communities in the region don't have those because they've been paved over and um, put into pipes underneath the ground. Uh, we have, you know, Maple Creek, we have Hyde Creek, we have various um, uh, waterways that support healthy salmon. And uh, the Watershed Society of, of BC has brought forward a program called uh, Connected Waters. And one of the things that I have brought forward through LMLGA is a policy to... Um, upgrade flood infrastructure so that it is um, friendly for fish passage. A lot of the infrastructure that we've built um, for flood flooding in our communities has never thought about the, the fish that live in those waterways. So as we upgrade um, that aged infrastructure, um, now what we're going to build uh, moving forward is going to be able to be um, fish friendly and able to have fish moving back and forth um, past this flood infrastructure um, so that they can come back to their spawning habitat and we can continue to hopefully see you know strong salmon um, runs in our communities so I think that's one of one of the things that we're doing in our community Port Coquitlam's um, on Maple Creek is going to upgrade flood infrastructure um, and it will not be as problematic as it has in the past not just about preventing flooding but about giving support to um, fish that live in our waterways and letting them get back to their habitat to, to spawn and rear their young and do what they need to do in their life cycle. So I think that's a really good example because it shows how it, important it is to work together as a region, um, that there are issues that affect whole regions, not necessarily you know, recognizing boundaries between municipalities. One of the big issues, and you kind of touched on it with talking about flooding and infrastructure, is climate change. Is there a role that LMLGA is playing to um, kind of help coordinate climate, the mitigation effects throughout the region? Absolutely. Um, a lot of communities are bringing forward policy through our process. 
um, that is getting heavily supported through the UBCM um, conference and then moves on to the province. So I think you're starting to see the province take seriously uh, watershed health and fund initiatives to uh, make sure that we have healthy watersheds um, in the future. Um, plus, the, you know, the climate plans that communities are doing, some communities are setting the bar, bar very high, um, building some good climate plans. And regionally, uh, if we can work together as a region and um, have a bit of a more unified approach to especially things like flooding and fires, I think we are a lot better off than having a piecemeal approach by different communities, who, some who set the bar high, some who set the bar are, are unable to set the bar high. Um, it's better, a unified approach, I think, on these types of things, especially flooding, is absolutely necessary and, and a benefit for all. So when you say a unified approach, you're talking about groups speaking as one voice, yeah. a lot of, right? Yeah. Which, which presumably has more power um, in this case in Victoria. Right. Exactly. Okay. And uh, so I'm. I'm wondering. <laughs> I can't help myself wondering, what what are the issues where, where you might have a little bit of friction? Um, because because you are you are you are the, um, the south western most, um, yeah. uh, group. Yeah. What, are, what? I'm interested a little bit. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. So, no, what some of the other what are some of the other issues yeah. that you're hearing from the interior of British Columbia that are are different from what we have here in the Lower Mainland and in this particular region? When yeah, there's there's a real urban and rural divide, right? Mm -hmm. We have different priorities. We have different communities. Um, you know, a, a, a lot of what happens up in the northern part of the province is um, is interest rooted in in industry. Um, whereas um, in in the region in Metro Vancouver, we're not as rooted in industry as we are, say, in, in tech or um, other types of businesses. We, we have different issues in different communities. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where sometimes we we can be divided between that urban and, urban and rural with, with our priorities. But we know that by working together, being a unified voice, we are better off. So... You know, we work to try to bridge those gaps. So how, what process is that then? Is it by consensus or by voting? Or how do you deal with those sometimes contentious, or maybe not even contentious, but differing goals and, and differing needs? Con amongst conflict. The word conflict keeps coming up, like there are conflicts of needs. Yeah, yeah, conflicting needs is a good way to put it because we have different priorities, exactly. And what it hap where it happens is usually at UBCM. It's kind of where those... It, it, can, it can be shaped as a bit of a clash of priorities, but I think oftentimes once we work through them and realize the greater benefit for all um, at working together, we, we can kind of bridge those things and make smooth, smooth the gaps and not make them so, um, I guess, glaring, and we can, we can sort things out and move forward. So, so what are the trends right now? What are the, what are the biggest issues that you're seeing we, we did talk about issues earlier, but yeah. I'm wondering if there's anything else on that. Yeah, well, housing, of course, is hugely important, I think, in all our communities across the province. Um, housing, it's just so expensive for people. So, Laura, from what you've told us, it sounds like the Alabama LGA really has their pulse on the province of what's happening out there and, and some of the really important topics out there. Why do we not hear more about the LMLGA, and how can the public find out more about this association? Yeah, well, we fly a bit below the radar, I think, because we don't tend to blow our own horn. Um, it's not really part of our mandate to talk about ourselves and, and the work that we do. Um, so a lot of people don't know who we are. And plus, plus our name is a bit cumbersome, right? Like the Lower Mainland Local Government Association. Um, is, is a lot for people to, um, I, I guess, talk about in terms of our name. Um, but we are beholden to our membership, um, and that's who we work for. And I think that's also why you don't hear a lot about us publicly, because we just work for our membership. And um, so it's a bit of a, bit of a fly below the radar, uh, you know, kind of level of regional government that most people don't know about, don't hear about, because they're just doing good work kind of behind the scenes to make sure that we get good policy brought forward to the province. So people 
community members mm -hmm. bring their concerns to city councils, mm -hmm. people from city councils who are on the LM, LGA, mm -hmm. people who are on that, then take it to that group. They take it to that group where the work gets done. So they don't necessarily, um, they don't necessarily need to broadcast that because they're doing work amongst themselves. They're doing the people's work amongst themselves. Yes. And then, and because those groups are all different th throughout the province in different regions, um, they all come together to under the UBCM where they then try to come to some kind of consensus to act on all of those issues that really came from the people. Absolutely. Right. Does that, that, yes. that's sort of like a, the flow through. And that makes sense that it's not advertised because it's not a place where there will also be people buying booths and having a convention and things like that and trying to influence governments. You don't want that necessarily. Well, that, we, that's how I can see it in my head. Yeah. At our conferences, we do. We do have these trade shows where people buy booths and try to, you know, I wouldn't say influence because they try to let let people who are elected know about what their products are or what their services They're are. <laughs> that sounds like influence to me. <laughs> it sounds a lot like it. Did you say that they they are at the LM um, the LMLGA? Oh, so they do that. That yeah. okay. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's a, that's access that people don't have. Well, and it's an interesting process, and I know sometimes there are there are positives and negatives with that. Um, it's been brought up before, um, you know, influence um, and those types of things, for sure. But our conference would cost a lot more. Like, to be honest, it would probably be almost prohibitive. A lot of communities don't have big budgets for their... Oh, I'm going to push back. I'm going to push back. Um, but, but that is the cost of democracy. And maybe larger, larger um, municipalities should pick up the cost or larger larger groups should pick up the cost to the smaller groups to make sure that their voices are heard right yeah sorry i know you're not arguing with me but i think in this particular case because you're talking about it would be prohibitive right well i think there is some needs to be some leveling of of the playing field between areas of large population and areas of small um, to, to share resources to make sure that everybody gets benefit um, from from what we do. So I, I tend to agree that working for the greater good of all is a big part of what ideally governments are trying to do. And I'm not pushing at you. It's no. just, mm -hmm. it's just I think that's a kind of, that's a difficult kind of thinking mm -hmm. that we have to address in society. It, to me, it's taxation. That's what our taxation does, right? But just to clarify, like you're there um, working on the issues and amongst the municipalities, but the organizations that are funding this, they don't, they're not part of that, are they? They don't have a voice at the table with you. No, they're just helping us basically not sponsor our conferences, but put on our conferences. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, there is something to be said for having that hard conversation. How much would our conferences cost if we had no sponsors, mm -hmm. if we had no trade shows, you know, how much would it cost us? And I, I will tell you from a community that um, we don't have a very big budget for us to attend conferences and, and um, community fundraisers and things like that. It would make, make it pretty challenging um, to attend a lot of those things or you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> so it, puts up barriers. You had said earlier that you were on a, a couple of committees at UBCM. Can you tell us a little bit about what those committees are and, and what kind of role you play in those? Aside from being on the board of, of the Union of BC Municipalities, I'm also on two committees. One is the Indigenous Relations Committee, um, and, and we work with the province to provide local governments uh, with clarity around the expectations for um, UNDRIP, um, which is federal, and DRIPA, which is BC. So, you know, working to um, move forward with reconciliation and um, acknowledge and um, uh, provision of the rights and title uh, that Indigenous communities have. And then the other committee I'm on is the Health and Development Committee. Um, and we, uh, as a committee, work to promote health, obviously, in communities and disease prevention. Um, and take policy direction uh, to assist uh, communities with public health issues. 
So obviously COVID was a big one that everyone was working on in the last two years, but also, um, you know, doctors in rural areas, um, healthcare funding, ambulance service, and, and health authorities and how they, how they work to support people in our communities. So those two committees do that type of work and it's very rewarding work. I really like working with UBCM and LMLGA. It's, um, it's, it's a lot of good people working hard for their communities and it's a voluntary um, uh, type of position too. Uh, I'm elected definitely um, as president of LMLGA, but we aren't paid um, like if you were to sit on a committee at Metro Vancouver or some of the other um, uh, opportunities out there. It isn't a, is a voluntary position, but I think that shows that the people who are working really hard for their communities are really committed by stepping up to do that level of policy work. I think we seem to be seeing a lot more of UNDRIP. Have you had a role in, in pushing that forward to the province of BC? And do you think that's partly why we're hearing about it now? I would say that that is part of uh, why you hear about it more, that there is some uh, level of um, gentle pressure put on by uh, local governments to the province to um, continue to do that important work as we move forward. Are you being heard though? Are we as local governments being heard? By, by the provincial government? Sometimes it's challenging for sure. Um, you know, sometimes we feel like a lot of our issues that we're dealing with, housing's a perfect example, that we uh, face a lot of downloading from provincial and federal governments to do more without the inherent funding that come, should come with it. Um, and then that really stretches us thin to try to do what we have to do to, um, uh, I guess, rise to the challenges that the community needs while trying to juggle what should be being paid for and done by provincial and federal governments. Downloading is a big part of local government work. So it's interesting because it goes up to the province and then does it also come back down like you're saying there's down some downloading um, and do you push back against that or is it just what comes down from the province is the end of the line or the final decision I think it depends you know it depends what it is I think you know we all know that whether it's local um, regional or provincial we're all working to make our communities better it's just we have jurisdictions with quite quite firm lines and to try to keep within those jurisdictions and make sure that the important things are funded for communities is, is challenging always and I think we always blur a little bit you know the lines sometimes because we have to um, and homeless, homelessness is a, is a big issue right we the province and the feds are the ones who are supposed to pay for housing and um, make sure that housing is taken care of for Canadians and British Columbians but in our municipalities, we see a lot of problems with homelessness, and we there's a lot of need, and um, a lot of people out there who who need to be housed, and that becomes a problem for local governments, even though it's the jurisdiction of provincial and federal. But we have such collaborative and respectful discussions about the priorities for our communities. Um, of course, we have the Fraser Valley uh, folks sitting on our board. And they've been through so many challenges in the last year or two through, of course, everyone has through COVID, but with the flooding, the, you know, significant amount of flooding, of fires that um, have, have, have happened provincially over the last few summers uh, has really been, a, been an extra burden on the fra folks in the Fraser Valley and, you know, where our food comes from for the most part. Uh, a lot of the farmers that are out there trying to you know, ensure we have a good food supply and they've faced big challenges and so there's been a lot of discussions of those challenges and how we can work to, um, I guess, be a bit more resilient in the future to um, respond to, to disasters like they've seen. So, so I'm hearing that that's, one, that's a priority, that's a priority too, is food, food security. We have um, like all the communities and, and the municipalities in the Lower Mainland, then it seems like there's some real synergies to be drawn there with, with respect to food security mm. as well as many other issues, of course. Absolutely. We've got a lot of communities that have beautiful soil for growing good food and um, areas of, uh, of large tracts of land where, you know, raising animals and 
producing food is um, conducive. So yeah. we're super fortunate to have what we have. And but yet we're in a place where there's a, a conflict between farmlands and what developers want to do, yeah. which is which I think is difficult. And and I look at that through a lens of um, I, of climate change. We're, we're climate change and climate disasters, for instance, what we saw this past year where the lower mainland was entirely cut off. And now we're thinking, we have to think about where are we going to get food in the world? How are we going to replace that? And yet we have fantastic soil right here in our own backyard, right in, right in our community, in the community that you're a councillor from in Poco. Yeah. We have large tracts of open land that are in question of what they're going to be used for. Yeah, and food security is a really important issue. And if we want to be resilient to the climate crisis challenges yeah. we face, food security is really important. And our communities, just out of curiosity, because we're on this track, are communities planning for that? Are they, are they discussing that amongst themselves? Some are. Some may not have the resources to do, do it as much in depth. But just to discuss it? They don't have the resources to just talk about it? Well, I guess, you know, when it comes to each different municipality or regional districts and what their priorities are that they strategically place as priorities at the start of their term. Um, that may be there or it may not. Um, some communities are further ahead than others at working to be food secure communities, but I do think from a regional and provincial perspective it is something we all need to pay closer attention to. But absolutely. And I just have sort of a follow-up question. I think, Brad, you sort of alluded to it about development. Um, we have sort of a competition between, well, I guess we could almost call it a competition between development and agricultural land and green space and things like that. Is that something that would be brought forward to the LMLGA, like um, talking about the balance and, and how things play out amongst the municipalities? Well, I'm not really sure that that's something that's come up that I can speak to, but I know that provincially, you know, the agricultural land reserve is, is obviously provincial jurisdiction, um, and there is a lot of work that the province does to protect that agricultural land for that purpose, and sometimes there is, um, in communities, that land is used for um, purposes that are not um, appropriate for food security and so the province does a pretty good job I think of, of making sure that that um, land stays as agricultural land reserve and, and pr protected for us to be a food secure region for the future. Mm -hmm. But there are still are pressures on it. But there still are always pressures on it absolutely. Yeah. There's development pressures um, and some properties that have agricultural land use them for you know inappropriate things like parking, you know, um, RVs or, mm -hmm. or um, all kinds of things that just take up space on the land and don't um, provide uh, food. Uh, yeah, as opposed to providing food. Yeah. Well, I think I've learned a lot about the LMLGA that I didn't know before. I, I, think, that, I think that we've covered a lot of ground today and um, probably that would be it for now. But I hope that maybe what we could do is come and ask some of those other questions, maybe some questions more closer to home sometime. Absolutely. Happy to chat anytime. Thanks for the opportunity today. That, that'd be great. So thank you so much, Laura DuPont, uh, president of LMLGA and Port Coquitlam City Councillor for joining us today and, and telling us about the LMLGA. And thanks to, as always, Tri-City Community TV for um, filming We've Got Issues today, our little show that's about about what's going on in our own community, speaking to various members. Thanks again for being here.